complicated math making it difficult for you to choose and mix your extender with your semen? Stay tuned to see how it's done easily. Hey guys, welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host Sam. Today we'll be talking about dilutions, specifically in the context of calculating uh, extender use and for sperm analysis. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends on social media, and if you're interested in the iSperm automated analysis system, give us a call. So you may be thinking, and you may be looking online, boy, calculating the extender ratio or diluting my raw semen counts to use on the iSperm or any other CASA system or hematocytometer is complicated. And that is true. We are going to show you the easiest and most reliable way to both visualize and calculate the ratios re required for best analysis to gather your progressive motility readings on the eye sperm. And just in general, when looking at recommendations for extenders, what to dilute them down to. So the equation we have here is pretty much the general and universal dilution equation. So we have C1V1 equals C2V2, where C stands for concentration. This can be in million per milliliter for sperm analysis, nanogram per milliliter, um, many other different metrics on that. For this demonstration, we'll be using million per milliliter. And we have V, which stands for volume. Of course, you all know what volume is. We may measure it in milliliters, ounces, gallons, liters, femtoliters, there's a, there's a variety of it. But for this demonstration, again, the standard for sperm analysis is going to be milliliters. So this equation holds true, and this could be used for a variety of things, for anything from in the kitchen to um, adding powders to water, etc. Now, in this instance, we're gonna consider the raw sperm to be the solute and the extender or water for quick analysis to be the solvent. Now you don't need to really necessarily know those terms, however I just wanted to use them in this context to give you an idea that the sperm liquid itself is what we're placing into a larger amount of extender, doing a quick analysis on the eye sperm and need to dilute it down into the range of 10 to 75 million per milliliter. So in this equation, the C1V1 this just means like the original concentration times the original volume equals the new or second concentration times the second volume. So you may notice right away, we need to keep the concentration data the same, i.e. million per milliliter on one side and million per milliliter on the other, as well as the volume. So we'll need to keep this in milliliters and we'll need to keep that in milliliters for the equation to hold true. Okay, so let's start out with this equation, and let's say we get a raw analysis from the eye sperm, again, a raw recently collected sperm of 250 million per milliliter. Now, we're probably going to get a reasonable motility on that. It's probably going to be close to 100%, um, but we want to dilute it down so that we can A, manually look at abnormal morphology, and B, so we can get a correct and accurate progressive motility. So we need that in the range for the eye sperm of 10 to 75 million per milliliter. So what do we do and what ratio do we use? Well, we can use this equation to quickly find that out. So we have the C1, or concentration of 250 million per milliliter. You don't necessarily need to put that in times volume equals we're going to change C just to a blank because this calculation will enable us to tell us what that end result is based on the extender volume used. So we're going to recommend the use of a mechanical pipetter for mixing the semen and the extender so we know exactly how much volume of each we use to get the correct mixture. So if we're doing a ratio of 1 to 4, we have here for the first section, one milliliter of the sperm fluid. So this is just gonna be 250, a raw count in million per milliliter, times one milliliter, the amount of the sample that we removed to mix with extender, 
or the sample of volume that's going to be mixed with extender equals blank times volume two. So volume two is just the total volume of the mixture. So this is now pretty easy. We want a one to four or whatever you decide or the extender suggests ratio. So that's going to be one part semen and four parts extender. Well, we have one milliliter of semen, so we need four milliliters of extender. That will give us that one to four ratio. Again, that's one part to four parts. So now we have a total volume here of five. And this is going to be times five. So if you remember algebra, now it's pretty simple from here. We're going to make concentration two, or C2. We're going to call it X. Of course, you could leave it as C2. I feel like X is a little bit easier to understand this with. So we're going to switch it to the variable X. Now, to isolate X, you just divide both sides of the equation by what? By the volume two, our total final volume. So again, that was one part semen, one milliliter semen, four milliliters of extender, and this can be applied in any ratio. You can use 100 microliters of semen and 400 microliters of extender, so on and so forth. So we use algebra to divide both sides by five. So now we have 250 divided by five equals X. So X, or our final concentration, simply equals 50. So after extending in a 1 to 4 ratio with an original raw count of 250 million per milliliter, we should expect to see around 50 million per milliliter when mixed with the ratio and analyzed again. We will have charts posted for you for use with the eye sperm suggesting what ratio with water or extender you need to get it into that 10 to 75 million per milliliter range. So i.e. if you're at 400 million raw, that chart will tell you approximately the ratio you need and you can bypass all of this. However, if you need to know more exactly, this equation is going to get you there the quickest. So now be sure also when you're picking volumes of extender and semen to mix, you pick, some, pick something that's pretty much easier to use. We don't want to use 99 microliters of semen, for example, and then 396 microliters of extender. That's going to make the math very difficult for you and for transferring over and mixing. Um, so pick, something, pick a number easy to work with. I like personally 100 microliters. Um, at any ratio that will give you more than enough mixed sample to do an analysis on the eye sperm. Again, you may want to do this analysis prior to mixing the raw semen with the extender so that you know what your progressive is and what ratio to mix it in. Now we can also reverse this equation if we know the concentration diluted. So that's going to be concentration two if we plug these easy numbers in, we can go back to an estimate of what the raw count will be. So let's give that a try. Yeah, so re to reverse this equation, we have the concentration of extended semen. So we're going to use the same numbers and work backwards. We have a 1 to 4 ratio. We have an easy number to work with, in this case, five total milliliters, one milliliter of semen, four milliliters of extender. So that's going to make this our extended concentration. We know it to be 50 million per milliliter times a total volume of five milliliters. So we know on the back half of the equation, we don't know what our concentration value is of the raw. So let's just make this X again. But we do know, according to the ratio, what the volume 
of the raw semen was. So it's a one to four ratio. We have a total of five milliliters. That means we have one milliliter of semen. Now, depending on the volume that you pick, this can get a little complicated. So again, try to pick easier numbers to work with. When mixing it, you might have 10 total milliliters of prepared semen raw and add in 30 milliliters of extender, so on and so forth. Use something easy to work with. So we now have X times one is still equivalent to X, or if you want the proof, you could just divide both sides by one, it's gonna be the same. So X equals 50 times five, which is 250. So our original concentration here is 250 million per milliliter. You can see that was the equation we did moving forward with the one to four ratio, and now we're moving back. We tested the extended concentration versus the raw concentration. So thanks for joining us for this demonstration. Again, use this a couple times. It's gonna get very easy for you to use. Once you do it a few times, remember to keep the volume measurements, i.e. milliliters or microliters, constant, as well as the concentration, which more than likely for you will be million per milliliter. Keep those constant and you'll be good to go.